Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about function overloading and overload resolution. So in the last video, we were looking at functions. So we were looking at kind of their basic form, how we write them, and how we use them. Now, one of the questions that sometimes comes up is how do we handle cases where we have functions that are doing the similar thing, um, but maybe working on different types or have a different number of parameters? Do we have to create a new name, say, for each of these functions, and then keep track of, you know, two, three, five, ten different names for functions that are essentially performing the same kind of logical operation? Now, the answer to this is no, right? In C++, we have this thing called function overloading and overload resolution, where we rely on our compiler to choose the right version of a function for us. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. So let's go ahead and get started. And we can, of course, start with creating a new source file. So something like um, overloading.cpp. And inside of here, we can, of course, start with our main function. Now. Let's say that we want to do something like print out some arrays. So maybe we want to print out an array of integers and an array of floating point numbers. So let's go ahead and you know, set all that up. So first we have to include some headers here. So we'll include say array and we'll include IO stream. And then we'll go ahead and start creating uh, some arrays down here. So we'll create say a std array of say three integers and we'll just call this say my int array. And we'll set this equal to maybe just one, two, and three for simplicity. And likewise, uh, we can do something similar and create an array of floating point numbers. So three floating point numbers, we'll call it my float array. And we'll go ahead and set this equal to 1.1f, 2.2f, and 3.3f, right? Just for simplicity. Okay, now let's say we wanna print out um, these two arrays here. Um, now, as we looked at last time, uh, it can sometimes be useful to factor that code out into a function. That way we can reuse it if we want to print out, say, multiple int arrays or multiple float arrays. So let's go ahead and write those functions here. So let's go ahead and create a new function to print out our int arrays. So maybe we'll call this something like print int array, right? And it will take some std array of three integers. That's the type that we're going to be passing in we'll just call that array. And inside of here, we can just use a range-based for loop to print out each of the elements in our array. So we'll use something like for, you know, auto value in my array. So we're using automatic type deduction here um, to extract the values from our array. And we'll just std c out whatever the value is, followed by a space. And then at the very end, we'll print out say a new line character. So this all goes on a new line. Then back inside of our main function here, we can go ahead and use that function, right? To print out our array. So we'll just call print int array down here with the my int array. Okay, so we've taken care of, you know, one of our prints here, right? We're now printing out our integer array. So how would we handle, say, printing out our floating point array? Well, one way we could, of course, do this is just copy, say, um, our print int array function, change it to, say, print float array, and then make it take floats instead of a, a, an integer array with three elements. And then we're all set here, right? So we have a new function called print float array that takes an array of floats, prints out all the contents, and then prints out a new line character. So we can use that down here in our function as well. So let's go ahead and use our print float array with our my float array. Okay, so everything looks okay here, right? We've created two functions. We're using those two functions down here, right? One for int array and one for a float array. So we can go ahead and save this and we can compile our overloading.cpp and go ahead and create an executable maybe named uh, overloading. Right, that'll work. And we can go ahead and run overloading and we get the expected result. We print our three integers, one, two, and three, and we print our three floats, 1.1, 2.2, and 3.3. Now, if we go back into our code here, um, we've got something a bit clunky going on. So, you know, right now we have this print int array and this print float array. Um, and these functions have different names right here. 
which is a bit annoying if we think about it from an interface perspective and designing an interface. So now, you know, the end user of say all of these functions, right, if we're developing software is going to have to remember, you know, all the types um, that, you know, that are part of our name here that we're going to be using to print with, right? So if I'm printing integers, I have to remember to use the print interarray function. If I'm printing a float array, I have to remember to use the print float array function. It would be much more convenient if we just had, say, a unified name or some um, constant name that we could use and allow our compiler to pick the right function for us. And that's exactly what we get with this thing called function overloading and overload resolution. So on the right-hand side of the page here, I have the uh, uh, CPP reference page for overload resolution up here. And it's quite complex and there's quite a few things involved and it even includes some things uh, about templates, um, which we're going to be getting into in the next video. But kind of the core idea here is that we're relying on our compiler to look up the right function for us. And that's going to be based on this thing called our function signature. So our compiler is going to figure out which function to call based on a combination of say our function name and the number and order of our parameters inside of our parameter list. Now, because it relies on those two things, we can do something like this. We can actually have two functions of the exact same name. So we can have two functions called print array, and this is perfectly okay because these two functions still have different function signatures. The name of both of these is print array, but this one takes a std array of three integers, and this other function takes a std array of three floats, right? Two different types here. So our compiler can tell these two functions apart, right? We don't have to create some unique name for both of these functions, as long as our compiler can tell the difference between them. So down here inside of our main function, we can go ahead and get rid of this print int uh, or the, the int part and the float part of these functions and everything is still going to work um, exactly the same way. But now we have this constant print array name that we can use over our code and just rely on our compiler to choose the right function for us. So this is a lot like automatic type deduction. Right? We're relying on our compiler to say, look at names and look at types and choose the right function, right? The one that we meant to use. So we'll go ahead and save this and we can go ahead and recompile overloading um, into this executable and we can go ahead and run it and you can see we get the exact same result one two and three for our integer print and then 1.1 2.2 and 3.3 um, for our floating point print okay so how can we tell say if our compiler was really choosing the right version of this function to use how how can we tell that um, you know, we weren't just both, both of these calls here. How do we tell that they both weren't going to say the same function? Well, we can of course just delete one of them, right? So we can say fully delete maybe our float uh, print um, array function and try to compile again. And we'll see that we get an error here. So you can see here at line 17, it sees it's complaining about our function call this print array when we're passing my float array. And it tells us error could not convert my float array from an array of floats to an array of integers here. So you can see that when our compiler tries to use that print array that takes a, an, an array of integers, we get an error because we're using the wrong type here. That function doesn't take an array of floats, it takes an array of ints. So our compiler yells at us and um, fails to compile our application. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, look at another way that something like this could fail. So an, an, another way we can fail in overload resolution is if we have, say, two different functions that look identical to the compiler here. So let's say we'll go ahead and just completely copy this print array that takes our std array of three integers and we'll paste it down here. And we can even change, say, the function body to be something completely different. Maybe this will instead just try to do, you know, std cout, you know, hello world, right? With a new line character. So we have two functions that are doing completely different things. However, the fact is, is that the function signatures are still identical. Both are called print array and both take the same number of parameters and in the exact same order, right? With the same types in the same order. So if we go ahead and try to compile this, 
with G++, we see a new uh, kind of error here um, related to this overloading, right? So here we get a redefinition error of our void print array of std array of three integers. So you can see here that we have, you know, on line 11, some print array of three integers, and we can see that it was previously uh, defined on line four, right? It's another function called print array with the exact same function signature, right? So this is where we have to be kind of careful, right? So we can't have, even if they have different function bodies, we can't have functions that have identical function, function signatures. Because at the end of the day, our compiler has to know which function are you trying to use? And if the functions look identical from kind of an interface perspective, so from their function signature, your compiler won't know what you meant, right? What your intentions were, which function you were trying to call, right? It's not able to do this overload resolution and figure out which, uh, you know, which function you were intending to use. So one of the things that compilers really hate is this kind of ambiguity. Whenever our compiler finds something that's ambiguous, it usually just throws its hands up and says, hey, I'm not compiling this because I don't know what you mean here. I don't know what you're trying to do. Okay, so that's a little bit on uh, function overloading. Another issue that we're going to talk about, you know, in the next video is this idea of templates and addressing one of the problems we ha we still have here with these two print array functions. So notice here, um, usually when we're writing things like functions, we're trying to get rid of code duplication. But you can see we have a form of code duplication right here between our two different functions. So we have functions that are essentially, or they have exactly identical function bodies. The only difference is their input types right here. So what types they're using inside the functions. So we'll look at how we can address this problem in the next video using something called templates. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, provide a link to this overload resolution page right below the video. And as always, you can find um, any of this code at github.com slash coffee before arch. But again, that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.